My friends, welcome. Welcome to another video. Welcome to a reaction video. But it's not going to be Rugby Player Reacts because I have retired that title. Today is the day that I learn all there is to know about our old mate Bazinga. Now, apparently I'm either his lookalike, as you may have seen in the last video, or his dad. And um, I'm gonna leave that decision up to you guys. I may be his dad, but uh, I would have had to have him when I was five years old. So with that in mind, we're, we're beginning today's video with <clears throat> how to be Bazinga. And, and clearly this guy has some influence because he's got his own YouTube original series. His own series. Now, I learned a little bit about this guy in, in the last video. Um, he has come back, he's fought back from a severe bout of depression due to the fact that he, he just wasn't happy with himself. And to help him with that journey, um, he got in shape. Now I, look, you know, when you're at the physical state that he was, which is not the best, a physical and mental state, to actually be able to switch that and turn it around is something to be really, really proud of. Um, this video series has like 4 million views on each of the videos. You know, he's clearly got, he's clearly got some influence and I want to bite of that influence. I really do. Ethan started to train for the London Marathon, I'm led to believe. This series is a three episode series. They're about 20 minutes long each. I originally looked this guy up because so many people on my page were telling me how much I look like him. Now I'm continuing to watch his content because I'm actually genuinely interested. So I want to see, you know, what makes him tick. I want to see how he turned this around and I want to see how he did in the marathon. I love training. I did my own marathon about this time last year. So to see that, you know, obviously we clearly have a, at least one common interest and um, I'm going to leave it there. So without further ado, this is Jacob McDonald reacts to Bazinga Takes On The London Marathon. How to be Bazinga, episode one of three. Let's go. This is how I became who I am. Teenage Cancer Trust have asked me to run the London Marathon and there's no other answer than yes. When I started this journey, there really was. Now, I didn't even think this was the same guy. I saw this clip in the last one. I did not think this is, look, look at it. He's completely and utterly changed himself, physically and mentally. Insane. No athletic ability inside of this body. Cheers to that. It might be hard, but it's going to be worth it. It's part of the process. You've got to trust the process. Depending where you've come from and where you're going, you're just so inspiring. We've been through so much together. I love my friends so much. Come on, mate. Think this is hard. Think what the marathon's going to be like. Ethan's my whole world. A lot of people don't really know the real situation behind everything that me and my mum have been through. <laughs> Might stop. Look inside of yourself and really start making the right choices to be the person you want to be. That is why I'm doing this documentary. By the way, I think this was one of the reasons why people thought I looked like him so much. But I got contacts in today, so we'll take these off. I'm not sure if he wears glasses like this, but... Oh, he's got a GDR for God's sake! That's my favourite fucking car! Ugh. You, <laughs> you lucky bastard! Hey! Hey, how are you? Me and my mum are almost like an unbreakable bond. She's like my best friend rather than my mum. A we GTR! Together, always have done, probably always will. Ethan's my whole world. My absolute heartbeat. Without him, there is no heart. So, we are at Mummy Bez's house today because she's going to cook me a nice little meal because she's caring and she loves her son. Very much. So, and we've got a whole box of fun to go through. This is everything that has existed about me from get go. Day one. Everything that belongs in my life. There's more than that. There's a whole nother one of them up there. My whole pregnancy, all I kept saying when I used to rub my tongue was I want a very, very... I will say, this is the very first YouTube... Sorry, we're gonna fix this exposure. Oh, no, we'll go down a bit. Um, this is the very first YouTube original series I've ever watched. I just wanted to say that. And um, just one more thing before we get into it. Ba -ba 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 Naughty little boy. And I was blessed in that regard. Yeah, that's right. me. Not many people know, but I actually had Ethan on my own. 
So it was a very, very emotional day. One that I'll treasure forever. <laughs> Damn, it'll be hard. It was on point, you know. Look at that. You did a good job. I did. I've always known how to dress. The real dad disappeared when I was conceived. It was very tough. Carrying him on my own and consciously having him on my own has driven me to always fight for every cause. She made that choice. It's the reason I'm sat here today. He's all I've got and I'm Fuck, all man. he's got. I've just decided to come back into my children's lives because I wasn't willing to be that dad that took off and, and, and never came back. I was never willing to do that. That's why I'm here right now, sitting right here. The real situation behind everything that me and my mum have been through. We knew that his childhood wasn't great, you know, he would tell us stories. As a teenager, it became apparent to Ethan that he had been abandoned twice and realised that a lot of our life was a lie. We knew that his dad left home from an early age and that his mum was basically the mum and the dad. When Ethan was... So he was part of the Sidemen crew, right, which is a YouTube group, a British YouTube group. And I assume we're going to hear some parts from um, all of them talking about their journey together on YouTube and what they did and what they didn't know about Ethan. Six months old, I met his fake dad, as he calls him. He was there till 13. It all went horribly downhill in that relationship due to drug addictions and debt that my mum tried supporting him through to one day just go to the shops and not come back. And then with that, Fat. I found out that he wasn't my biological dad due to the divorce papers. It's a bit of a sensitive topic for him, I feel like. So he thought that work. was his biological dad his whole entire childhood. Why, why has this happened to me? During that time is when my mum had cancer. His mum was his only support system. It was terrifying. And I didn't want him to think for one minute that I was going to die. So that would have been a very, back. very scary time for him. I had to find us somewhere to live and get back on our feet. I had to sit up the homeless office every single day. And it affected Ethan badly at school. Ethan would be a bit disruptive. Destructive. Just school didn't work for him. He didn't fit. That was the time that... I sort of went off the rails. It was sort of just a whirlwind at that time. I can barely imagine what it feels like, so I can't really like put into words how he must feel. I had to take antidepressants and see therapists. Yeah, it's really emotional. He might have stopped. Everything she went through whilst I was in secondary school is a real merit to the type of woman she is. I think younger Ethan had a lot of emotional baggage, but I think nowadays I've turned all of that energy into now something positive. I think I'm going to do the marathon. Teenage Cancer Trust have asked me to potentially run the London Marathon for them. And I think there's no other answer than yes. With my mum having cancer at one point in my life and just knowing that a lot of my audience are young as well. It's a perfect fit and the right charity and the right challenge for this sort of point in my life. This is a whole new chapter. This is where there I can really get across what I want to do and really prove It's got some legs on him, I'll tell, I I'll tell you that. Put my mind to. The marathon is no joke, and Ethan is the type of person that when he wants to do something, he will put 100% effort into it and make sure it's done properly. He doesn't cut corners. Running the London Marathon is a trophy, like a milestone and almost proof that he has come so far. Everyone always who's done a marathon says it's like, when you finish it, it's like a new lease of life. You're like, okay, I've actually taken on one of the hardest challenges a human can do. I'm worried about it. Fucking oath it is, mate. And I can attest to that. Running the marathon with being breathless and a little asthmatic, but with his lifestyle change, I'm sure he will do it. It's right. Have a look at this. Have a look at this. <laughs> turns over. This way? Yeah. Ah, when I started this journey, come on, bro. No athletic ability <laughs> inside of this body. Here we go. How big is Bazinga? 103.1 kg. The worst possible condition I could have been in, I was in. I don't think I realized how bad of a state he was in until I saw him in a good physical condition. He was trying to defeat 
his old habits. The weight just piled on. Wasn't eating the right foods. He never ate a vegetable in his life. Typical fast food like your crisps. Pringles. Pizza. Salt and pepper chips from the Chinese. Wings, burgers, etc. Egg fried rice from curry sauce. I'm just gonna eat, 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 eat. I enjoy it, it's nice. Wasn't even remotely exercising. Ethan's weight always had to be on his mind somewhere. There's, there's certain elements and telltale signs that it was there. He had quite a low self-esteem. When you go through weight gains, you know it's happening but it doesn't really click. It all coincided with the rise of the Sidemen. He was trolled badly for his weight and the way he looked. When you look at these videos, you'll see the horrible comments like, oh, look at the size of Ethan's legs, la 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 la. Yeah, he's got massive thighs, all right. We saw them before, but now they're ripped. You could see the light behind his eyes fading. You sort of think, I'm unhappy. Like, this is not what I want to be like. But I knew that that was the start of becoming something better. Everyone sees the physical change, but only the people closer to him will really see the mental change. That and he's got a Gymshark sponsorship now. To accomplish with his first boxing fight. It really just made me feel like I'm gonna take that step. I mean, like, okay, I'm gonna get in shape. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna make something of myself. The sheer amount of weight he lost is ridiculous. His transformation has made him happier. His own self-worth has changed dramatically. As soon as he started seeing improvements, you could see his confidence went up. It's like he's just shed a layer of skin. Damn! Now the actual person who was inside the whole time. Right, I'm gonna do some research on how to run a marathon. <laughs> That's pretty much what I did, bro. I fucking took on the Queenstown Marathon with no experience and no training. I literally gave myself two weeks of training. If you want to see my experience running in my first marathon, head back to my marathon vlog series. I started it two weeks out. You guys thought I was fucking crazy. But I tell you what, I've got the same mindset as this motherfucker. When you put your mind to something, you do it. You put 110% in, either all in or all out. So, Boom. Marathon Bang. Tutorial. Can you do a tutorial on how to do the London my marathon experience, oh, my fellow YouTuber. Decent. Oh, here we go. Race bet. <laughs> so, I had this conversation with Charlie the other day. I said, what if I need a poo whilst I'm running? Because like, I can just get struck with, like, <laughs> it, it happens, ghost poos will occur. So they're using cubicles. I will lose 30 minutes of my marathon time in a cubicle. No, you won't. London Marathon, tips and advice. The best thing is he's doing this whilst running. <laughs> First tip is to avoid making the classic mistake, which is going off too quickly from the start. Right, first tip, don't head off too quickly. That's something I've been trying to get in my head, is the fact that I need to just keep one pace throughout the whole thing. There's no point being like, oh, da -da 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 -da. can't do that. 26 miles, you need to pace yourself. Second top tip is to actually use performance enhancers, things like caffeine and beetroot, which have been found to have a very positive effect. Get info right here. Just eat four or five beetroot. Oh no, <laughs> I don't want to eat four or five beetroot. It's not whole beetroot, that's not good. Just go for the caffeine, bro. That's my final tip. My, that's my tip. You enjoy the experience. It is. Yeah, absolutely, enjoy merely it. Merely a fact of putting the work in, put the hard work i got to say, man, for my marathon, um, just the scenes and the epic surroundings I was in would be totally different to the London Marathon, I'm led to believe, but that's what you do, you do, you just take it in. I listened to music, it's going to be interesting to, to see whether he listens to music or not. Working, and it's down to you to That was important for me. I can run around the track, I can do that, I can do it for a good cause, I'm doing it to prove something to people, I can do that. If anything, it's proving it to myself. I think now, I'm ready to get on the road, you can get, get the miles in, get training, get this process started. I wonder how tall he is. He was 103 kg. Ethan Pate, 5 foot 9. Alright, so I'm 6'1. London Marathon, under 4 hours. I've got it written down on the board at home. I see that every day. Under four hours. That's exactly what I said, mate. But I think the London Marathon's flat. The Queenstown one was up and down, so it was a bit different. But four hours, I reckon you can do it too. Under four hours is a personal achievement as well. It's something that I will hold with me for the rest of my life. Yeah, you should do. If he doesn't, I'm going to rip him. 
Because <laughs> I could probably do it in four hours and I haven't trained, so. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on the 26th of April, 2020, I will be running the London Marathon. How about that? So now it's time to push the message across and hopefully inspire as many people to make some better life choices in 2020. Maybe you'd like to come along and train with me or share your story, then make sure to get involved. It'd be absolutely amazing to see how many of you guys are rallying behind this massive event. And the best part of this whole process is that I will be running for a charity, and that charity is Teenage Cancer Trust. So, we've put the announcement video out, and we've got some really, really interesting submissions already, so I'm excited to go through and hear people's stories. My name is Alfie, and I've got PTSD from getting bullied in school for being fat and not fighting back. But I changed up my training three years ago to be a better version of myself. I just want to support Bez on his journey as he's been through a war zone of struggles. Bez. Thank you, Alfie. So that's what I mean, even just like nice little messages like that are amazing. And the fact that you have support of people like this through, again, like a big challenge. Victoria. I've been a big fan of Ethan and the Sidemen since they first became the Sidemen. Yes. Yes. Bang. I've literally just heard about the side men today, so, but I'm a huge fan already. I'm trying to become a better, healthier me. Due to fertility problems, myself and my husband are struggling to have children, and I need to lose three and a half stone, if not more, for the clinic to help us. I've been watching Ethan's weight loss journey, and he's done so well. He has inspired me to keep fighting, keep pushing towards my goals, and never give up. And it's thanks to seeing Ethan's journey that I'm still motivated to do it. See, that's a, that inspires me, like, Again, I just closed the door on a version of myself that I didn't necessarily want to be anymore. Whereas this is like, you're fighting to bring life into the world and stuff like that. I think that's a testament to like, character. Finley has been watching the Sidemen since their inception and has been inspired by Ethan's transformation. Aged 15, Finley could feel a lot of pressure behind his eye for a few weeks. He went to the doctor and they sent him for an MRI scan. The doctors rushed back in because they discovered there was a tumour behind his eye. It was a really rare type of cancer that only 50 people in the UK have. Wow. The day we got the diagnosis was probably the worst day of our lives. I was in year 10 when I got diagnosed. I got a form of cancer called Langerhans cell histiocytosis. They say there's only 50 cases in the UK every year and the chance of getting it is like 1 in 500,000. So it's very rare. I always viewed myself as like, a fit and healthy boy. It was the last thing that I expected. It was really scary. Both sets of grandparents around and mum and dad both looked like they'd been crying, Amber the same. You don't want to be negative, but you know it goes through your head and you just can't bear to think about if something really bad happens. We really just tried to be positive and we just carried on and we got through it. Getting the all clear was just a massive weight off my shoulders. It just meant that there wasn't anything I had to worry about anymore. Finally knowing that we got over that period. Bro, getting through cancer, whether whether you're 15 or 50, would carry you through life with a sense that you could like, literally do anything and nothing can, nothing can stop you, man. Or, you know, as well as that, make you think that every day is a blessing, don't take any day for granted, and try and achieve the most you can and live without regret, bro. And we got there together, it was amazing. I couldn't talk to people about it, I really couldn't. I couldn't, I know, but I mean now, it's sort of, it, it's sort of so much better now, obviously. Um, oh, sorry. What resonates with me is the fact that this can happen to anyone of any age, and I can imagine that it is a real struggle for not only the people going through it, but also the families, and I'd like to do what I can. In fact, he's matured a lot, this guy. I can tell, bro. Even with, the de even with his voice. I'm sure he didn't speak like that like three, four years ago. But he's, yeah. He's a man now. Help that course. Oh, I've got a message. It's from Bazinga. Thanks for the making this Ethan out here just about to train. But through making this documentary, I've heard your cancel survival story and you are genuinely inspiring. And it's amazing to hear that you are running the London Marathon with your family too. I can't wait to train with you sometime soon. It's pretty cool. That's very cool. Other people's stories can like inspire you to push yourself very even cool. further. I'd like to say I have an open willingness to try anything now. 
So trying to learn from people that have excelled in certain fields and have pushed themselves through mental places is something that I really admire and would like to take on myself. My glutes are fiery. Good. You've got to break through a wall when you're training for a marathon and that's more mental than physical. Three, two, one, and stop. It's all part of the process, you've got to trust the process. Trust the process. I can remember that wall. It's cliche, but you have to. It comes at 30 well, k's. You find a lot about yourself whilst you're doing these things. Well, for me, it came at 32. You really find out what deep waters you can take yourself to. Eddie Hall. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> The beast has a lot of power. So, I got a text from Eddie Hall asking him to meet at Blackpool Airport. I don't know where he is, but I assume he's got something to do with that. <laughs> what the? <laughs> what the I think, fuck? I think that's Eddie. Is that him? Is he on the tank? <laughs> the world's strongest man is on a tank. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> My heart rate's gone up. My heart rate's really gone up. Yeah, so is mine. <laughs> you enjoy that? Yeah. How are you, bro? You okay? Good. Good to see you. So, Eddie, what are we here doing today? If you've got two eyes, you can see a tank and you oh, can see God. a fire engine. Now, I want you today to pull that fire engine. Okay. Right. Do you think you can do it? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> He's no. huge. It's about 20 tons. You will have never experienced cardiovascular endurance until you pull the truck. And believe me, it's the hardest 60 seconds of your life. Now, Ethan, the reason we're doing this is because I want to prove to you that the human body can do amazing things. You're going to pull that fire truck, and this is going to put you in real good prep, ready for that marathon. The beast of a challenge you've got coming up. Just to show you how it's done, I'm gonna pull this tank, which doesn't look as big, but believe me, just as heavy, and because of all the traction, it's gonna be a lot harder, so. Are you ready, buddy? I think I, I think I am. I'll show you how it's done. Good luck, man. Thank you. <laughs> right, buddy, there's a few tips I'm gonna give you now. So, got a rope? Yeah. Now this is vital, this is where probably the majority of the power comes from, is the arms. So with this, on this we'll start, you want to get as tight as you possibly can, with a nice big outreach like that, and then feet together, that's so important, so we're not going to start like this, yep. and you drop your hips down, like that, and then you put the head up, and use this to sort of pull your body to the floor, that's how you get the grip, that's how you put the weight into your feet. Gotcha. So it's literally like that. <laughs> And then just little baby steps, and we keep keep it going. But how are you talking about this? <laughs> Come on, <laughs> That's impressive, man. Yeah, important to keep your arms pumping as well. Yeah. <sighs> this is outrageous. He's pulling a tank. He's he's pulling a tank. I think you can it. The tank is pulling a tank. <laughs> the airport's been blessed today with the world's strongest man's presence. I don't feel prepared for this in the slightest. I don't think I've ever really practiced to pull a truck, but I'd like to think there's a little bit of heart and grit in there, somewhere. So, I'll give it my best shot, and I hopefully we get it moving. Right, you ready now, buddy? Give it a go, mate. This is it, the big moment. Right, so pull that nice... Jesus, there's a size and difference, isn't it? Yep. Feet together. Go, son. Okay, are you ready? Big breath. That's right, here we go. All right, keep low. Come on. Yeah. Keep those feet together. <laughs> come on, get up. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Right, come on mate, if you think this is hard, think what the marathon's gonna be like. Right. Good call, Eddie. Good call. Come on! No. Come on. Ah. Get that momentum stop. It's stuck! Come on! Ah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On a scale of 1 to 10, how hard was that? About 10. It's a truck! When my elbows took the third bang, it's not gonna move today. It's a tough one, you know, a 20 ton. Fire truck, you know, he's never pulled anything like that before. Just a bit more right this time. I reckon he can. Feet together. Come on, mate. That's the lowest I want you to go now. Yeah. Get it, get it. Right, Ethan, are you ready, mate? Use your arms. It's going to be hard, man. Yep. 
Three, two, one. Go. Come on, baby steps, baby steps, smaller steps than that. Come That's on. Smaller. Moving, come on. Come on. Come on, Ethan. It's moving now. Here we go. Here we go. Come on, use those arms now, like pistons. Keep your breathing in sync with your legs. Left. Right. Come on. That's it. Let's go, let's go. Come on. Nice. Stay on it. Get that head down now. Finish your strong. Come on. Come on. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Go. I'll do it. That was awesome, man. <laughs> oh, boy. Certainly was awesome. Oh, I guess you're going. Oh, jeez, yeah. Oh, boy. Ethan did really well today. You know, he slept over a few times, but he just didn't give up. Today's been an experience that I never really thought I would ever have, but I feel like I've gained perspective from it. The mental aspect is just as powerful as the physical, and having that ability to power through and get to the end of challenges is super important in life. I pulled a fire truck. I would say that's a surprise. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, just like if you complete a marathon, you take that experience, you put it in the bank, and you move on. Just like pulling a fire truck. I've never done anything like that, but it'd be quite the achievement. To anybody. <laughs> this marathon is not coming up. It's not going to be an easy task, but it's just proved to me today that you can do it, and that's character building. Right, Ethan, I'm going to you all the best, mate. Thank you very much, Good mate. luck. Thank you. I'll see you crossing that line, okay? Thank you very much. Take see you in a bit. If I get a taxi out of here, I'll play. <laughs> <laughs> you told me two years ago you were going to be running the London Marathon. I probably would have laughed at you and just said you're absolutely crazy, but here we are. It's written in the stars that I will be running. The thing is, man. You must stay at home. The world's crumbling. Oh, man. Oh, my God. You need a truffle over burning hot coal. I was panicking. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know he felt that bad that he had to even, and just like, I'd sort of convinced myself that now is the perfect time to just make myself disappear. Jesus. Tell you what, this is good. I'll see you back here for episode number two, where he, I'm led to believe, trains under COVID. Because when he, like, he made that first video in February, the date for the marathon was in April, and instantly I thought, well, what about COVID? And it seems as if we're about to see. So, thank you for watching. Um, thank you for the support on my channel. This is my deep dive into Bazinga. It had to happen eventually, and we're doing it today. So I want to say thank you. And peace out.